With a personality as loud as his shirt, Nauru's President Rene Harris is a colourful leader with a penchant for parties and expensive travel. This bad boy won new friends in Canberra by bailing out John Howard from the Tampa refugee crisis. But after years of misrule by a succession of leaders, his country is on the brink of bankruptcy. I think this economy is going to collapse completely if it hasn't collapsed already. They have dissipated 1.5 billion. 1.5 billion. 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 Right. Has been With dissipated. With a B. Yes. With a B. Yeah, right. Elected president only in April, Harris has inherited much of the mess, but it's under his leadership the tiny Pacific nation must change course radically or be sunk by an economic tsunami. It's our concern for the future of this country, for the future of the children of this country, for, for the generations to come. Something has to be done now in order to secure, secure their future. If there's nothing done now, nothing will happen to them. They won't have a future. And we have 225 kilo on a bar for the one. This will be another PB. Rock and roll, come on. With 11,000 people on an island just over twice the size of Sydney Airport, Nauru is one of the smallest, most remote nations on earth. So it surprised many when, with little more than guts and ability, Nauru recently won a world weightlifting title, and with it, the glory of hosting a global championship. Has anybody got any fourth and final attempt for the record? It's the kind of uplifting example okay. the Pacific desperately needs. But lack of funds lost them the event and revealed just how broke this nation is. For the government can no longer afford to send these would-be world beaters off the island. We're still lifting, but sort of lifting and going nowhere. I don't like it. And can't do anything about it. Either then start a revolution or what? <laughs> but it wasn't always like this. Happy, healthy and wealthy, the Nauru of just a few decades ago was everything the Pacific Island paradise could be, and very much more. Its rich deposit of phosphate fertilised the farms of Australia and made Nauruans millionaires, with free education and health care creating the world's wealthiest welfare state. But phosphate would not last forever. And at Nauru's 1968 independence from Australian administration, a proud founding president spelled out how phosphate royalties would be invested in a special trust fund to keep the money rolling in when the phosphate ran out. I feel very sure of this. Uh, the forecast of income in the time when there will be no more phosphate, it, it compares quite favourably with what uh, is being received today and uh, this is uh, from uh, the investments of funds which are being invested today. For years the dream worked. In the 1970s Nauru House, then Melbourne's tallest building, was the flagship of the Trust Fund's blue chip share and property portfolio a towering testament to everything that could go right for Nauru. And at its peak, the fund was worth well over a billion dollars. But right next door is an equally potent monument to everything that's turned sour. The Southern Cross Hotel was a Melbourne icon until six years ago, when Nauru paid $52 million for it, then shut it down. Nauru also lost millions when it bought and failed to develop the Queen Victoria Hospital site, recently on sold to be the new BHP Billiton headquarters. While clearly mismanaging some investments, 
Nauru has also been the victim of bad advice from foreign carpetbaggers like Australians John Walsh and Adrian Powles, found guilty of attempting to defraud Nauru of $100 million. I think everybody was in it. Many of the consultants who advised them were also part of it, who gave them wrong advice, took them sort of, in a way, since uh, led them up the garden path into investments which were totally dubious in nature. And it's not just Nauru's Australian assets that are now in trouble. Across the Pacific, many of Nauru's properties, like Fiji's Grand Pacific Hotel, have been mothballed. Grand plans for redevelopment condemned like the building itself. What used to be called the Diamond of Fiji is now an embarrassing dud. What's happened here at the Grand Pacific Hotel sums up everything that's gone wrong with Nauru's investments. A prime location loaded with potential that's been left to rot because the money that should have been spent on redevelopment has either been squandered or stolen. I would say that uh, our, our investment funds are now a merely myths now. A myth? A myth now. So you think there's nothing left? Nothing left. It's very serious. Very serious and I think not only serious but it's criminal. I think it is criminal. The government has borrowed over a billion dollars from, uh, from uh, the trust and the, and the uh, Bank of Nauru put together, and so that's where the money's gone. But they were running significant deficits, so, and there was no, no revenue sort of coming in at that point in time, and therefore they had to cover this shortfall with borrowings. Now, where, would they, where, where could they borrow against? The only way to borrow first was the bank, which then went, uh, went bankrupt because they didn't have enough money to finance. Then the next resort was to go and collateralize or mortgage the properties of NPRT and borrow from there. Back on Nauru, the wreckage of the island's economy is becoming apparent. With government deficits still running at some $44 million a year against a trust fund balance of just $100 million, Nauru seems to have just a couple of years left before bankruptcy. The exact figures are unknown, but the impact on the islanders is not. Picture a, a sudden reversal in, in that st standard of living, where you have power blackouts, where you have only three three hours of power uh, in, in a 24-hour period, where you have children who, who cannot go to school sometimes because the school has been shut down because there is no water there, because the power is not available, where, where at home they, they have to stay at home where the parents uh, have not been paid for up to a month. Uh, picture a scene where even your, your hard-earned savings cannot be accessed through the Bank of Nauru. To make matters worse, Nauruans are starting to fight over what's left of the island's exhausted interior. A dispute between the Nauru Phosphate Corporation and landowners over royalties has crippled phosphate production, virtually stopping export revenue. Given Nauru's economic crisis, it surprised many when it agreed to host the recent Pacific Islands Forum. It's an expensive event, needing an eye for detail, like getting the red carpet out before New Zealand's Prime Minister disembarks, or making sure the Garland girls don't ignore her. At the forum's opening ceremony, delegates sweated it out, waiting for the air conditioning to be fixed. Twenty minutes later, René Harris received his presidential salute. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Nauru. Clearly enjoying the fruits of office, the recently elected president saw the forum as a chance to show the world that he had the vision to take Nauru forward. Seizing his chance for statesmanship, Harris issued an appeal on behalf of the next generation. My children, your children.
they have hope for the forum because that is all they can cling to. The sentiments are noble, but few in his audience would know that they were listening to a thug, a convicted felon. And may God bless the president. Thank you. Three years ago, Harris, along with two of his hoods wielding whippersnippers, freed a few relatives from Nauru's police lockup. <laughs> Harris was convicted of serious assault and jailbreaking. And there's more. Foreign correspondent has obtained this Justice Ministry report alleging grave financial irregularities involving huge amounts in the office accounts of the Nauru Phosphate Corporation committed by its then chairman, Rene Harris. In what the report called a gross violation of corporate norms, Mr Harris racked up a bill of over $231,000. In 1998, there was the Minister of Justice filed a complaint against you for the alleged misappropriation of some $230,000. What's your response to that? I'm not aware of uh, misappropriating that amount of uh, money. No, I'm not. Well, they listed in document forms quite a number of uh, cases that they say was a misappropriation of money by you and your family while you were chairman of the MPC. Well, no, I'm not aware of those. I'm not. Could I maybe show you a couple? Yes. The documents show Chairman Harris liked travelling by Concorde. Nearly $18,000 of corporate money was spent to fly him and his wife from London to New York. He used $24,000 of corporate funds as a deposit on a house here at 3 Cameron Street in Melbourne. Then there were the regular cash advances he gave himself, his wife and his daughter, all through the corporation's account in Melbourne. Yes, but that couldn't be a counterpart. We could have paid money here and give it to her in Melbourne. It's done every day. Not so, according to former Justice Minister and sitting MP Tony Aldoa. Well, that, that's inappropriate. That is, obviously... That shouldn't be done, yeah. if that's the case. That is the case. That is, is that all right? Also detailed were the corporate American Express cards used by Rene and his wife to buy clothes, lingerie and jewellery. So the money's come from the corporation right. for things like clothes and jewellery by your wife over, the, right. over, over a considerable number of years. Well, uh, if it's on the Amex, yes, you would buy jewellery, but you wouldn't just buy jewellery out of NPC account. Well, that appears to be what's happened. Well... Uh, I can show you, Harris show you says he's repaid right? all the money, yes, but after repeated records, requests but, uh, has failed to I'm provide worried, us with uh, any proof. Yeah, and senior company here. sources well, insist uh, most of the money uh, the is still are, outstanding. Uh, uh, his personal finances and what, uh, what has happened and the charges against him uh, would play a key role in how we go, go forth from here. What I would really, we would like to see, and which is why we're trying to set up some sort of a meeting sooner or later when we come to a decision as to whether um, he's going to change, he's going to make some changes in the government, he's going to the way the government operates and the way he or, he or his, um, his colleagues uh, in the government operate as far as their personal finances are concerned. If there is an alternative, this is it. A nascent opposition formed in the back room of a friend's house focused on one thing, why Nauru can no longer pay its bills. We think the government should be coming clean on on what the status of our trust funds are, on what the status of our Bank of, Bank of Nauru is, what is the status of our phosphate industry, why are our trust funds not able to, to uh, supplement the income formally derived from our phosphate exports, why are people not able to access their savings from the Bank of Nauru. Calling themselves the visionaries, this group has launched the island's first news sheet to question their leaders on where the money is going but criticism has its costs. Uh, when my association with, uh, with this group uh, came to light uh, with, the, with the government, I was given a not so uh, subtle warning that my, my continued, well, my public involvement would, would not be in the interest of my professional career. As presidential, uh, as, presidential as, as the closest advisor to the president. Um, but I, I think that the time has, 
uh, the time has come when when someone has to has to make a stand for for what is in the greater national interest. Many Nauruans would agree, as the money runs out, times are becoming intolerably tough for the living and the dead. Two of the NPC workers went to the uh, generator at the hospital and uh, they were shocked to uh, the, uh, smell the stench there because the morgue uh, was uh, dripping blood outside and uh, coagulating, I guess, the work. Yeah. Simply because of the lack of power. Yeah. Mm. It was a dreadful situation. The what? The morgue itself, the morgue, where the dead bodies are, you know, and I mean, it's a graphic situation, a graphic example, if you like, of, of where the government is just failing to pay its bills. We don't have a morgue on Nauru. Uh -huh. Someone's exaggerating getting the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> no, that's why, we, that's why we appreciate the chance to see you about it. Okay. There is no more than that. Mr Harris is clearly out of touch. It may be humble, but this is Nauru's morgue. The day we were there, a body was being taken out for burial. But if the dead are neglected, the sick are simply ignored. 31-year-old Joseph is just the latest Nauruan who could lose a limb through diabetes. A totally imported diet of processed food and a genetic predisposition have given Nauru the highest incidence of diabetes in the world. It's mainly uh, problems with uh, little sores getting infected and the, the uncontrolled diabetes letting the infection get out of control very quickly. Mm. Um, a lot of diabetics don't have very good circulation in the feet and that adds to the problem. Karen Keke is a doctor a called back from Melbourne due to the lack of trained staff and he's shocked by what he found. We request supplies, uh, we have drugs on order but the orders aren't fulfilled by the uh, Ministry of Finance. They won't ship unless they receive payment. They're showing that the health of the people is not a priority. Those sick enough used to get treated for free in Australia, all paid for by Nauru's government. But Australian hospitals are now refusing to treat Nauruan patients because the bills have not been paid. People complaining that they can't get proper medical treatment, for example, you're not concerned about that at the moment? No, I'm concerned about medical treatment. Uh, I do not know of people that have died because of lack of medical treatment, no, none. Yeah. People yep. are dying. People are dying every day in Nauru because of the lack of funding the government is giving the health service. And every week, every few days, somebody dies that I think we could have saved that person. For the people of Nauru, it's, it's a really a sad experience. I mean, just imagine if they had a billion dollars in their trust account sitting pretty and earning a reasonable return, five, six, seven percent, whatever you want, they could have lived happily ever after. Sweetheart, I'll give you all my love in every way I can. For Rene and his ministers, the celebrations go on. For $20 million from the Australian government, he's just turned Nauru into a refugee processing depot. The Pacific solution may well have helped John Howard, but with a record of accountability as busted as the landscape itself. The question is, who is going to save Nauru?